Sometimes it's hard to understand the concept of censorship when we have so many options for news. There are hundreds of TV stations, newspapers, and radio shows. But the truth is that almost every avenue from which we get our information in the mainstream media is controlled by only six corporations that have one specific interest, profit. News censorship is happening every day, but not necessarily from the top down blacking out the stories, but also in the form of self-censorship, framing, backpaging, all to protect the interests of those corporate conglomerates. So who are the big six corporations that control nearly everything you see, hear, and read? First, there's Comcast, formerly owned by GE, which controls MSNBC, NBC, and Telemundo. And there's Disney, which owns ABC, The History Channel, and CNN. I'm sorry, and ESPN. Next, Viacom, the parent company of MTV, Paramount, and BET. And CBS, with all its affiliates. And there's News Corp, which owns Fox News, The New York Post, and The Wall Street Journal. And finally, Time Warner, the parent company of CNN, Time, and People Magazine, as well as Warner Brothers. So what impact does it have? when an agency that's supposed to serve as a watchdog for the powerful becomes a lapdog for the powerful. To break down some of the most egregious cases of censorship and conflicts of interest in the corporate media, BTS producer Manuel Rapolo. Hi, Abby. How's it going? Hi, what's going on? So, <laughs> Good. you know, when I think of the top-down censorship, kind of the, the, the hand of the corporation blacking out a story, two cases come to mind that are the most egregious. The first one was News Corp. Fox News was going to air a story on the bovine growth hormone, BGH bovine growth hormone, of course, another Monsanto case of censorship where they were invested in Monsanto for advertising and their boss said no when a team of Fox investigative reporters wanted to cover this story. Monsanto threatened the station, sent them a letter saying there will be dire consequences, this is a direct quote, dire consequences for Fox News if the story is aired and I wanted to play what happened when they confronted their boss about this. I said, you know, this is news. This is important. This is stuff people need to know. And I'll never forget, he didn't pause a beat, and he said, we just paid $3 billion for these television stations. We'll tell you what the news is. The news is what we say it is. So really, I mean, you know, you look at this case, and it's such, a, such an egregious case of censorship, and really he's saying, we'll tell you what the news is. The news is whatever we want it to be. The news is what, whatever our advertisers want it to be. No, it, it's not just, uh, when it comes to the, to the media, really, really, it's not just the parent companies. It's also your corporate sponsors. It's also uh, the people that are putting out the ads. I mean, Monsanto, had this story actually aired, would have probably pulled their advertisement for Roundup, for uh, aspartame, and, uh, and all those other products that that again aren't tested but but advertise all over all over Fox News and it's really interesting that that you point out this story because the reporters and uh that, that guy that you just played, they actually countersued against Fox under Florida's whistleblower statute. And uh, as it turns out, under Florida law, they lost that lawsuit because it turns out it's not illegal to falsify the news. So, I mean, that's, that's, that, that really should give you an idea of how dangerous this is and how powerful Monsanto is. Like, they've been doing this for... Yeah, they've been doing this for the past 10 years. Once again, another labeling issue where we see Monsanto censoring stories. You, you also were researching a story about ABC. Sure. Um, this is just another one of those examples. Back in 1998, uh, kind of a very clear-cut example. ABC uh, was 2020. They were going to air this uh, uh, story about how Disneyland is actually hiring pedophiles. I mean, it's it's just a crazy story. You're, you're thinking a theme park for kids and, and pedophiles just sounds terrible. They weren't able to pull the story. Why? Because Disney owns ABC. It's very clear-cut. You don't want to endanger or, 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 or make the corporate interests look bad. So I mean that's one of those clear-cut stories but I mean it also raises questions. That one's relatively easy not to downplay pedophiles but um, when you look at cases like uh, CNN. CNN's running a story about uh, the BP oil spill, the uh, Deepwater Horizon spill, uh, about the cleanup efforts and how you know it's you know things are getting better and as soon as the the segment's over you see a commercial come on and it's BP and it's BP representatives going come down to the coast and eat some <laughs> one-eyed shrimp or whatever they're doing. I mean that's that there's a problem in there and, and, and it's so obvious but I think people don't don't realize it as, as much they as it's in your face realize it but project censored one of the greatest uh, uh, you know research organizations in the country about censorship in the media did a study where they found that 118 people only sit on 288 corporate boards that unify kind of this media conglomerate 
and corporate uh, corporate America. So you have people involved in Kraft Foods, Monsanto, um, so many different things, defense corporations, the pharmaceutical industry, lobbying together, all sitting on these boards, and it really is such a small amount of people really controlling all these things from the top down. It's six what corporations. What are some of the most shocking things that you found in, in terms of just conflicts of interest? I was uh, l looking at this, and, and when we're looking at conflict of interest, there's two things that, that, that really need to be pointed out. It's not just corporations. Uh, a lot of execs that sit in corporations for, and you, and you said it in your introduction, they're, they're sitting on, for example, MSNBC, uh, NBC, I'm sorry, Citigroup, Exxon, Philip Morris. Their execs sit on board directors for Philip Morris. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. CBS has, uh, has board members sitting in, in Walmart, General Dynamics. These are drone manufacturers. The execs for CBS are the same guys that are sitting in the board of directors for drone manufacturers? And I think How is that okay? And I think when people think of the corporate media, they, they're like, oh, well, of course, the corporate media. But really, we're talking about NPR and PBS as well. I mean, NPR was running a story during the BP oil spill featuring a scientist that was talking about how oil was in the Gulf that would eat, I'm sorry, bacteria that would eat the oil. It was like, well, this bacteria is just going to clean up the oil itself. We don't have to worry about anything. Turns out later, according to Greg Palace, the scientist interviewed about the story was given half a billion dollars, half a billion, a billion exactly. dollars from BP. NPR never mentioned this detail, this quaint detail, when they were doing the story. And of course, we saw PBS. The thing about that, the, the yeah. money that, I mean, we're talking about one guy that received half a billion dollars. That money, he, that, that money actually spread out. It was more like a money spill, is what Greg Palace <laughs> said in that, in that uh, report that he did. So you've got all these universities, all these independent researchers all over the country doing research on oil biology, and they're all being funded by BP. And PBS aired the drone documentary by Lockheed Martin, pretty much a promo for drones. And you know, us talking about all this really calls into question the U.S. State Department issued a warning about restricted press freedom in the rest of the world, meanwhile ignoring that the consolidation of 90% of the U.S. media by six corporations, I mean really, we're ranked 32 in the world and press freedom here. And and it, I, exactly. And I, I know that we had an infographic somewhere. I wonder if we can pull it up. If not, um, it shows, you know, between 1983 and now, you're gone from this, like, multitude of, of media organizations in the country and really narrowing it down to six. Six that control nearly everything that we see and watch in, in, in this country, everything that we see and watch. And these organizations, they're also making political contributions. So, you know, they're throwing money into, in, into both sides of, of the equation, Democrats and Republicans, and they get back those special connections and inside information, turning, uh, turning, you know, talking points into news, essentially. Indeed they do. Thank you so much. Manuel Rapolo, BTS producer. Thanks, Abby.